Am I good to go? Okay. Uh, so, welcome everyone. Um, today's topic, as it was announced, it's image classification in PHP using neural networks. And, uh, well, a few words about me. Uh, I wrote my first PHP code around 99, so quite a long time ago. Um, currently, I live and work uh, in the beautiful city of Białystok in Poland. It's uh, Northeast Poland. And uh, I'm currently working with uh, two companies. One is uh, in Septon, where I am the CTO, and another one is Cyberus Labs, where I am a VP of engineering. So the presentation goals for today are to show you how the neural network work at the lowest possible level and uh, kind of demystify neural networks and show how simple it really is. And uh, to show you that you can train neural networks in pure PHP, because this is a PHP conference. Um, okay, so what is a neural network? Uh, well, definitely you have one in your head, is the, is the natural neural network. Uh, but today we are going to talk about artificial neural networks, uh, often called ANNs or just simply neural networks. <coughs> and I will use uh, usually an N neural network as a reference to artificial neural network. Well, the neural network is a simplified brain model. That's, that's what it is. And uh, it consists of a number of neurons that process information. That's kind of the simplest and probably the best definition. Uh, this is an example of a very simple neural network. So neural networks, they have input layer. Uh, uh, you, have, can, you can have an, a number of inputs. These are usually like numbers. Uh, you can mark them by, usually mark them by a letter X. So you can have uh, N uh, axes that are the input. Then you have a hidden layer of neurons. It can have various number of neurons. And then you have output. <coughs> you can have various number of outputs. So it doesn't have to equal N. Um, so who knows how neural network works in detail? Raise your hand. One, two, three. About 10. OK, good. Uh, well, the rest of you, we will find out how it works uh, today. So, those guys who know how it works, which year is considered to be the beginning of neural networks? Anyone? Mm, close, close. It was 1943. So, it was during the Second World War. The two guys, McCulloch and Pitts, they provided the first mathematical description of the neurons operations and, uh, and the data processing. <coughs> uh, so what is a neuron? Because that's kind of the building block of neural networks. Um, it's a def simple definition is that it's a system that processes the values of input signals. You have the input signals here uh, on the left-hand side. And uh, it converts the, those input signals into a uh, single output value. So for the, for the neuron, you have the input signals. They are marked by X. Then you have the input weights. Weight is just telling you how important this particular input is. Uh, then you here, you have the weighted sum. So you just multiply input by the weight and you add them up all together. Uh, and you have the bias. You can see it as a threshold value additional weight. And at the end of it, you have the activation function, which uh, kind of says, is, is it worth to pass the signal through, or maybe it should be zero. It will be, there will be more about it <coughs> later on. So um, there was a problem, problem in the 70s, uh, because two guys, Minsky and Puppert, in uh, 1969, they, in their research paper, they provided uh, kind of uh, a lot of limitations of single uh, layer neural networks and in the result there was a cut in funding for neural networks research so it's kind of stopped for a decade but luckily in the in the 80s 
1986, there was a significant advance in neural networks, multi-layered ne neural networks. Um, there was a, a method of learning of the neural networks was discovered, it's called backpropagation. And uh, in fact, to this day, there's the unstoppable success story of neural networks continues. So the main topic of today's uh, talk is image recognition. We are going to do this on a, on a simple example of uh, handwritten digits recognition. So here, <coughs> here we have the handwritten digits. It's like from zero to nine. Uh, they are labeled, so we actually know which one is which image is zero and which is not. We'll do some network training, and as the output, uh, we will have a class. It's called class, so we'll zero assigned to the image zero, and so on and so on, and nine assigned to the image that represents handwritten digit nine. Uh, for this purpose, we are going to use the famous m famous MNIST dataset. Uh, it's a data set of handwritten digits uh, from 0 to 9. Uh, the training data, data set is 60,000 images. The test data set is 10,000. Uh, it's available online. You can download it from, uh, from this URL. Uh, one digit is represented by uh, 28 by 28 pixels. Uh, this data set was prepared by a guy called Jan LeCun. He, who is currently director of EI uh, research uh, at Facebook. Uh, if, you <coughs> if you are wondering what the acronym MNIST means, it's Modified National Institute of Standards and Technology. Uh, so the, the MNIST classification. Um, this, this image shows you kind of all, all the images and that are grouped together in some, in some groups. For example, you have zeros here. Uh, you have twos here, you have ones here, uh, so they are kind of clearly distinctive groups. You can, can you don't mix them, but have a look at fives and threes. It's not that easy to distinguish handwritten five from handwritten six, uh, three, and the same applies to four and nine. It's not that easy. Well, there is a kind of separate group of fours here, separate group of nines here but there's also a lot of them kind of in the common set. So our input data, as I said, is an image. It's 28 by 28, so it, uh, in result, gives you um, like an array of pixels. If you count them from zero, you will get 783 as the last pixel. So this is, this is number six. We are going to use it uh, across our presentation. Um, so, <coughs> the, the input data that I'm going to use is slightly simplified MNIST. Uh, we are not going to use the full grayscale gray values, but we will just use ones and zeros. For, the, for black, we are going to use one, and for something that is close to white, we are going to use a zero. As you can see here, this, this is number six. Is it visible? Yeah, yeah I can see it. Uh, so, to read the data, we just kind of read this text file line by line, pixel by pixel, and uh, our input layer in result is 784 numbers. It's either 0 or 1. And the output data, because the, layer, the, the neural networks have outputs, the output layer is, uh, output data is something called one-hot encoding. Uh, so as we have 10 classes from 0 to 9, we are going to have an array, it's a 10 elements array, and um, for if we want to have 6 on the output, like a number 6, uh, we are going to put 1 on the 6th index, and other, or the other indexes are zeros. So if you want to have, if you want to have 1 on the output, you, you put 1 here at the 0 index, and the, and the rest of that is 0, and you do so for all the numbers, one, two, three, four, and et cetera, et cetera. So the number nine is, has the one set only on the, on the ninth index. So in our case, in the case of this MNIST data, our network looks like that. On the input, you have the access. This is the, let's say, P1 
pixels of the digit 6. So you have 784 inputs. Uh, we don't know yet what is in the hidden layer, maybe dragons, who knows. And uh, on the output, you have, you have 10 outputs. And uh, it's this one and hot, and hot encoding that I mentioned. And you have uh, number one set on the, on the index 6. And other, all other indexes uh, are set to, to zero. So it's time for the first monster. Um, the first monster is the linear algebra. It's a, it's a very scary monster. It eats beautiful blonde girls for breakfast. So guys, be prepared. Well, we will start very slowly. Uh, the linear algebra is a lot about matrices. So just a quick reminder, like uh, when we kind of go from beginning to, to the end. First, we have scalars. It's just a number, simple number. Then the vector, which is a list of number numbers. And then the matrix, which is a two-dimensional array. Simple, isn't it? Uh, matrix in PHP is basically a two-dimensional array. Simple. It's worth to remember that it has columns and rows. This is something <coughs> trivial, but uh, very, very important. Uh, we will go slightly deeper into this monstrosity. <laughs> First is the matrix addition. Uh, if we want to work with image processing and in general machine learning, we have to operate on matrices. So, well, matrix addition is actually quite simple. It's, well, it's trivial. There's nothing to explain here. You just go element by element in one and the other array and you just add them. And in the result, you have another array, another mat matrix. So this is the mathematical description. Here you have the PHP code, just two, four loops. Uh, subtraction, well, the same. Same as addition, just with the minus sign. Uh, multiplying matrix by a single number, so scalar multiplication, it's also simple and trivial. Uh, you just multiply every single element of the array by, by a number. That's all. Uh, we are going to slightly more complicated operations right now, uh, something that is called element-wise matrix multiplica multiplication, otherwise called also Hadamard product. <coughs> it's also very simple. You go through the all, uh, all both arrays, you multiply one element by another, and that's it. Uh, this is probably the most complicated uh, operation, matrix operation in, in my presentation. Uh, it's called like a, this is usually called matrix multiplication. This is the proper matrix, matrix multiplication. Uh, it's called also dot product. It's, uh, it's actually quite simple. So uh, here's the example of dot product. Uh, you get uh, the row, you get the column, uh, you multiply element by element, and then you just add them all, and you have, in the result, you have, you have your value. So here, 1, 2, 3, 7, 9, 8, uh, 11, uh, you multiply them, you add them, and the result, you have 58. So uh, if you want to kind of complete this, uh, uh, <coughs> this operation, you would multiply this row by this column, and then this row by this column, and again this row by this column. And that's all. You'd have your dot product done. Uh, from the code perspective, it's slightly more complicated. You need usually three, uh, three four loops to, to, to do this. And it's still quite, quite simple. And uh, probably the scariest one is the transposed matrix. It sounds scary, but it's actually very, very simple. Uh, you just uh, uh, switch columns with rows. So you just go through the uh, both arrays and you just replace rows with columns. And in the result, you have the transpose matrix. Simple, isn't it? <laughs> it's trivial. <laughs> um, so to summarize, uh, we have a matrix class in kind of pure PHP code. We have six methods to, methods to perform operations on uh, my matrices. It's about 100 lines of code. Uh, so we have method add uh, to add the matrices, sub to subtract, multiply 
to multiply by, by scalar, by, by single value, uh, multiply by matrix, dot product, and transpose. Six methods, 100, 100 lines of code. Uh, so just briefly, this is the matrix class. Uh, the constructor can either accept width and height, um, so just rows and columns, or it can accept uh, array of arrays if we have the uh, data structure built up front. Uh, there's one more function, uh, one more method that is really, really useful. Uh, it's called uh, apply function, so it will just allow us to apply a function to, uh, to every single element of, of the array. Or matrix. Uh, so, quick reminder about neuron. Uh, neurons have a number of inputs, a number of weights. They have the bias. They have the. This is actually the dot product. And this is where you kind of add all the signals. And they have the activation function. We'll go slightly deeper into the activation function. This is an example of activation function. It's called sigmoid function. There can be various activation functions. This is just an example. Uh, well, we are going to use it in, in our code. Uh, so it's easy. It's really easy. The sigmoid in, in PHP, you can just assign function to, to a variable. So this will just return 1 divided by 1 plus x, pro x from minus x. Trivial. So, sorry, this is probably the most complicated diagram in the whole presentation, but uh, it's not as complicated as it looks like. So, going from the top, we have the input layer. Uh, so, the, the we mark the input layer as X. So, the X is our new matrix. It has a size of 1 and uh, 784, so each, each number represents each pixel. Uh, in the in our image, then we have the hidden layer. Uh, we mark it as an H, H from hidden, and it has a size. We'll arbitrarily set it to 15 neurons, <coughs> so it's one uh, one dim dimension and uh, like 15 neurons. And the output layer, we mark it as Y. It's um, uh, it has uh, 10 outputs, as we <coughs> as we've seen. We have 10 classes from zero to nine. Uh, then, moving on, we have the uh, B2, it's the bias of the, of the output layer. So we have 10 biases, one per, one per, one per output. Uh, here it's getting slightly more complicated. Uh, we have a variable called W2. It's the, it's the matrix 15 by 10. It's just weights between the hidden layer and the output. It has to have like um, more values because it connects all the neurons, all the 15 neuro neurons in the hidden layer to the output layer. Uh, then we have 15 biases for the, for the hidden layer. It's a B1 variable. And uh, finally, we have the biggest array, uh, biggest matrix. It's the 784 by 15. It's the weight between the input and the, and the hidden layer. So, just a quick summary of, of the data structures. Uh, we have seven of them, kind of seven main data structures. It all, it's all our matrices. Input layer, weights, hidden layer, hidden layer, weights, output layer, bias, and output layer. So, Morpheus was right. What if I told you the matrix is everywhere? In artificial intelligence and machine learning, Matrices are basically everywhere. Well, uh, and uh, well, artificial intelligence is all around us. So, in fact, we are start to live in matrix right now. Um, <coughs> right, slightly more complicated uh, topics: how we propagate data forward through the uh, neural network. So, these are mathematical equations that uh, allow us to kind of propagate the uh, the data through the network. Uh, we will easily transfer them into uh, matrix operations. So the X is our input, as you remember, so it's the 784 uh, pixels. Uh, then have a look. This is, this is the X. H we have here, so this is the H. So H is actually X, this X, dot product 
with weights W1, W1. We add the bias, add the bias, here is the bias, B1, and we apply function sigmoid. This is the sigmoid function. And that's it. We calculated the signal at the, at the hidden layer. And we basically do the same with the output. We take the values of the hidden layer, H, there it is. We dot product with, uh, with weights, W2. We add the bias here, B2, and we apply the sigmoid function. And that's all. We propagated the signal through the neural networks. Three lines. Uh, slightly more complicated topic is the network training. Uh, the network training is a process of selection of neural network hyperparameters because all those, all the weights and the biases, they are called hyperparameters. So the, the <coughs> process of selection of those hyperparameters, uh, we want to kind of choose them in the way that the input data, our vector of pixels of digit uh, six, so like 784, after propagating through the network, as I showed you before, will give us the output vector like that. So we will set one on the, on the sixth position. So how to find those values of hyperparameters? Well, you can do it manually by trial and error. Well, good luck. It'll take a lot of time, really. <laughs> but it can be done automatically uh, through something called backpropagation that I mentioned before. And uh, Back propagation process is, well, from the high level, it's quite simple. Uh, first, you initialize the algorithm and the network. Uh, you you uh, compute the output based on the input data the, in the way that I just showed you. <coughs> you calculate the output error. We'll go into details in, in, in the next slide. Then we correct the weights and biases. Then we check, is the network trained? Yes, fine. Over. If no, go back to point two, do the computation, do the calculate the error, and so on and so on. So calculating the, the network error, it's uh, another mathematical equation, but really simple one. Uh, this function is called mean squared error. Uh, why it's mean squared error? Well, you would divide it by two and uh, you, you square it. Uh, why with the with the with star here? is the expected output for a given input, and uh, the, the y is the actual output calculated by the network. It will become slightly more clear on the next slide. Uh, so to calculate the network error, we are looking for the minimum of this error function. And uh, the minimum is zero. Well, zero is the minimum, for example, when y with the star equals y. So this this part of the equation goes to zero. This means that the network has no error, it's perfectly trained. Uh, so the, <coughs> the, the minimums can be kind of, uh, it's, a, it's a, a, a topic for, a, for another presentation, uh, just to tell you that there can be like a local minimums, for example, here, but we always want to find the global minimum of the, of the function, if possible. And uh, <coughs> I have to warn you now, uh, now uh, so kind of uh, faint-hearted folks are asked to close your eyes for the next five slides because there will be even bigger monsters than linear algebra. Are you ready? Okay. So now we have demons from the kind of deepest bottom of hell. Uh, we have derivatives. Who knows what derivatives are? Oh, good, 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 good. Nice one. So quickly, keep your eyes closed. Uh, this, this is something that we have to calculate. I'll skip, it <coughs> skip through it quite quickly. Luckily, when you have the matrix and we, we, we have the matrix operations, it's actually quite simple. So those equations, <coughs> you basically turn into, uh, into matrix operations. So you have subtraction, you have multiplication, you have dot product here, you have addition and you have you apply function the same here dot transpose multiply dot add apply and uh, further lines transpose dot dot that's all four lines of code that one is slightly 
better. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just uh, when you have the derivatives calculated, you have to correct the, the weights and biases. So that one is also turned into four lines of code. So you just subtract and multiply, subtract, multiply. So you correct weights one, weights two, biases one, biases two. And that's all. You can open your eyes. So there are cute kittens right now to give a moment of, of relax. Everyone relaxed? Some people I can see they are not relaxed. So a uh, few more kittens. <laughs> okay. All right. I think no monsters, no more monsters, I promise. Uh, so network training, a summary, essential source code for the network training. It's a simple network, but still it's only eight lines of code. It's a quite long lines, but still eight lines. Uh, network training, it's all about correcting weights and the biases. And it's all based on matrix operations. Uh, so here we wrap up those uh, lines of code into a single function which is called learn. Uh, so it's, a, it's not a big function, but it's, it kind of wraps up all those fancy derivatives calculation and uh, we will use it later. So it's all about matrix operations. Again, it's no revolution. It's not revolutions, it's operations. So let's do some training, uh, network training in PHP. Uh, so there is, uh, uh, in, in the neural network training, we usually use um, a concept of, of epochs. Epochs uh, is how many times we want to repeat the training process for the whole training set. And um, here we have at the, uh, the, the main loop is for the number of epochs. And the, uh, at the bottom we have number of records. So this is uh, all the training records that we have in the, in the training set. So like it can be 60,000 images. Uh, well, I choose like a lower number for the uh, training purposes. So how do we do the, the training? Well, we compute the output. Then we learn, compute, output, learn, compute, output, learn, compute, output, learn. So this line, learn, will just correct the weights and the biases for us in, in, in a way to get, f if we have the uh, input uh, digit, uh, digit six on the, on the input, um, the pixels of the number six, um, we want to have the Z one on the, on the hot, in the one hot encoding. Training takes time. Really? Uh, well, it depends on the amount of observations, so images that we have. Uh, it depends on the size of the input layer and the hidden layer also. It also depends on, on the number of ep epochs that we want to train the network, uh, how, many time, how many times we want to train the network. Or it can depend on the example for on the maximum level of the network error that we are willing to accept. Uh, so when we have this network trained, when we have all the weights and biases set to the proper values, we want, of course, to test this network to see if it really can classify all those hundred and digits properly. Uh, so uh, we have the hyperparameters trained. Mm, then we have like a test records. We should kind of separate our data set to have test records that are not included in the training set. Uh, and well, it's simple. We, we just print the expected output. So we like a print this uh, uh, one hot en encoding. And then, then we compute the output. Uh, we use the, the function that we, we had uh, written uh, previously. And we compare expected output to the computed output. Uh, so just to summarize, input data is an array of numbers. It's, it's, there's no, no magic here. Uh, output, da output data is also an array of numbers. Training is a process of calculating weights and biases in order to get the correct output. And the network training is based on matrix operations. That's it. Even, even Neo from the matrix knows neural networks. So I did a simple experiment. Uh, I choose the, the smallest, uh, smaller amount of, of, of images, just 926 in the training data set, 20 in the test data set. 
I did the training for 30 epochs and I used this small laptop with SSD hard drive, Intel i7, 8 gigabytes of RAM. The processes, you, um, processor utilization was about 10-15%, so it wasn't, wasn't that bad. This is example script output. So here you have the expected value. The, uh, we are expecting one to be set on the eighth position. Uh, the actual output of my script had no one here. No, the, just, just zeros everywhere. So this is the actual value. So this is like misclassification. Sorry, something went wrong. Network didn't recognize this number. Uh, but here I was expecting one. And here it is. The actual value is one. So this is the output of all the 20 uh, testing uh, images. And actually 17 of them, of 20, were recognized correctly. So it gives 85% of accuracy. So our simple one layer network achieved 85% of accuracy. Uh, given the kind of the simplicity of this architecture, it's pretty good result. It's very close to the result obtained by, by Jan Lecun in 1998. Uh, he achieved 88% using similar one-layer network. Uh, well, but uh, the latest solutions uh, based on complex architectures like uh, convolutional neural networks, they achieve 99.97% of accuracy, which is probably better than the recognition of those hundreds and digits by, by humans, because as, as you've seen, three can be similar to five and the four to nine, so it's not that easy even for, for, for a human to recognize it. Well, just uh, going quickly, because I just have 14 minutes. Uh, the execution times for the matrix operations. As you can see, it takes a long time. There's a lot of out of calls, even for those small data sets. Uh, the, the biggest, the, the longest execution time was for the dot product, <coughs> because as you remember, there were three loops, nested loops inside. And it uh, took 64 over 64% of the kind of execution time of the all operations. Uh, so subtraction was 19%, multiply, multiplication 13. These ones were small, this is the apply function. Okay, in total it took uh, 356 uh, seconds, not that long, but it's a small training data, data set, educational data set. Uh, so total script, script execution time was 268 seconds, My matrix operations 356, so 96.6% .6 of the execution time was spent on matrix operations. That's, that's a lot. And uh, just to remind you, only 30 epochs and only 926 images. So how do we speed up those matrix operations? Well, the kind of state-of-the-art solutions are based <coughs> on uh, GPUs, uh, usually done by NVIDIA, um, by something called CUDA. Uh, CUDA is a parallel computing platform and application programming interface model. It's uh, sometimes the acronym Compute Unified Device Architecture is used. This is something done by, by NVIDIA, NVIDIA CUDA. And um, the part of uh, CUDA that we are particularly inter interested in is called KUBLAS. It's an implementation of BLAS, which is basic linear algebra subprograms. Uh, and uh, it's using CUDA to speed up uh, linear algebra calculations. Uh, State-of-the-art solutions within this area are Keras TensorFlow. These are the kind of most common tools that are da used daily for uh, artificial intelligence. Keras, uh, it's an uh, open source, high-level neural networks Python li library. It's designed for easy and fast experimentation. It's really nice and easy to use. Y if you haven't used and you have some background of Python, I suggest you uh, do some uh, Keras, <coughs> uh, uh, Keras tutorials. It's it's really nice and easy. TensorFlow, uh, done by Google, 
It's uh, also open source. It's a low-level library for numerical computations based on data flow graphs. It's uh, TensorFlow because uh, uh, high, higher level ma matrices like three dimension and four dimension are co called tensors. And uh, this TensorFlow library, it allows kind of tensors to flow from the kind of beginning to the end. It's a, it's a fancy name. Um, and um, also worth mentioning that Google have something what is called Tensor Processing Unit. It's a, it's a hardware available via cloud only. It's uh, dedicated for tensor processing, so it's even, even faster and saves more energy. Uh, and the last one worth to mention, PyCuda, Python again. It allows to access API and NVIDIA CUDA API from Python. Uh, so here is an example of, of a benchmark that shows you how quickly, how, how you can really speed up the, the uh, matrix multiplication uh, using hardware acceleration. So here you have uh, um, a benchmark that I found on the internet, on the Canadian, Canadian website. So you have a multiplication of such array, 24,000 by 24,000 here, the other one. In the result, you have such big matrix. Hardware that was used is Tesla P100, one GPU. Uh, so here you have the double precision uh, m uh, benchmark. So on the CPU with one core, it took three seconds to multiply uh, these mat those matrices. And on using Kublas, it took 0 0.025 seconds. So it's 100. 22 times faster. It really much faster. <laughs> so call to action, guys. There is a job to do. Do the binding to PHP to CUDA, to CUDA in PHP. Uh, I found on the on the internet a um, guy called Nishiyama from Japan, Tokyo, uh, March this year. Uh, he did a comparison of uh, matrix multiplication uh, using pure PHP using arrays. Uh, he wrote a C extension <coughs> uh, in, in PHP to, to do the ma matrix multiplication. He also did a, uh, a binding, just one function for OpenBLAS. This is an implementation of basic linear algebra subsystem. And uh, he also did a simple binding to, to QBLAS, uh, but he just, it was just one function. And here is the comparison. Guys, have a look. This is, here you have the size of the matrix. Here you have the calculation time. And I'm afraid this line is PHP. <laughs> it means PHP doesn't do at all with the high level matrices. It, it just doesn't, period. This is the simple C um, implementation, slightly better. But have a look at those two lines, open blast and kublas. It's basically it doesn't matter what the size of the matrix is, it the, the the time in seconds it's it's just growing very slowly. Sorry? Uh which one? You know that there is there is um, uh, th th there's a lot of optimization that can be done in the in the matrix multiplication. So it's, it's, not, it's not a trivial topic. Yeah, uh, I believe that the PHP one is done in a most naive way that it can be done. <coughs> uh, so yeah, go moving on, uh, PHP CUDA or PHP OpenBLAS. Uh, there is a GitHub repo done by this guy, Nishiyama. Uh, he wrote PHP extension, which computes float matrix products. It supports Two fun uh, one function in OpenBLAS and in KubeBLAS, it's SGEM, it's a single precision floating general mat matrix multiply. This is kind of the basic of all matrix operations. Uh, so you can, you can actually compile it and, um, and, and use it. I did use it, uh, I did compile it and I did use it, but uh, I couldn't use it in our example because there's just one function implemented and I needed like six operations. So that's it. Um, well, there is already a neural network library in PHP, FUN. It's a binding to fast artificial neural network, but there is no BLAS or CUDA support. And uh, to be honest, the 
The list of functions is quite long. It's not easy to read. Uh, so there are better solutions right now. Okay, guys, just um, going to uh, more kind of uh, topics, how, how we can use this, all these uh, neural networks. We, we can, of course, use them for the um, uh, image classification, which I showed you. This, it's, it's not only for digits, we can use it for cuts also. <laughs> um, here we have the for e example of the uh, labeled training images. So here we have, have airplane, automobile, bird, cat, deer, and so on and so on. So you use, you use the neural network library, like Keras, for example, to, to define a neural network model. You do the training, the one that, uh, that we did today, and then on the train that network we can do the inference, the compute output function, and uh, we can get this cut through the network, <laughs> the photo of the cut, and in the result we have label, cut. Uh, we can use the neural networks for object detection. Uh, so this is example of detecting a car, a person here, another person, one more, and another person. We can also detect things like zebra lines. This all can be done by neural networks, more complicated, slightly more complicated than ours. We can do object detection and attribution. So we can detect a shirt, for example. So my shirt would be like detected as a t-shirt with elephant on it, <laughs> maybe, or maybe PHP. Uh, <coughs> we can do this for uh, fancy things like style transfer. So here you have a photo of a, like you have mountains here, you have a tree, sky. Uh, you have a very similar photo here, uh, but in the winter. And you can kind of add them together, and in the result you will have, sorry, it's slightly scaled, but this image is the winter image of that one. So this is the stuff that you can do using neural networks. Uh, you can use it for image completion. So, for example, you have man with glasses. You subtract man without glasses. You add a woman without glasses, and in the result, you can see a woman with glasses. So, this is image completion. Okay, short reminder of the presentation goals. Who understands how neural network works now? now? Put your hands up. Wow, great. <laughs> Who wants to do some more experimenting on his on her own? Perfect, great. I see it as a great success. Guys, so meet me at the conference. Uh, I'm staying here at the Clarion Hotel. Uh, I'm leaving Sunday 3 p.m. after all the kind of speaks, uh, uh, speakers are, are done. Uh, I'm happy to share the knowledge about machine learning, deep learning, uh, in general, software development process, I have like almost 20 years of experience doing software. Um, most recently, I got into Internet of Things, so if you have something interested in this area, feel, fee feel free to, to grab me. And uh, that's all, folks. Thank you very much. <laughs>